All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who I learned this truth from. I want to say peace and salutations to the healthfully elect. Today, I want to go into the book of Obadiah, chapter 1. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying and straight to the point. It's the book of Obadiah. It's only one chapter. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord, power concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have get behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. And yes, Esau Edom is greatly despised among all the heathen all the other nations outside of the twelve tribes of Israel. Continuing on, the part of thine heart had deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Yes. What that's going into is basically how, you know, Esau Edom is known for living in caves and high mountains they used to stay in Petra which is basically a huge mountain that had caves hence the reason for the skyscrapers continuing on verse 4 thou that exalt thyself as the eagle and thou that set thy and though thou set thyself thy nest among the stars Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. And yes, he also has satellites in space. Also weapons in space to try to combat our Lord, Yahweh Shai, when he returns. But it won't work. Verse 5. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou, how art thou cut off? Would they have, would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not have, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau Edom searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, said the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter for thy violence against thy brother Jacob shame shall cover thee and thou shalt be cut off forever in the day that thou stoodest on the other side in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was one of them. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger, neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction, neither should thou neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither should thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of his, of distress 
And basically what this is going into, how each time the children of Israel went into captivity, Esau Edom was there. He was always there, cheering on the other nations that brought us down. Also going into 70 AD, when he chased us out of our land of Jerusalem, he cut us off out of the borders and chased us into the western interiors of Africa. And then also brought us and captured us in the land of Africa, in the western coast of Africa, Salakia. Also brought us out and they rejoiced when they brought us low. Continuing on, verse 15 For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen, as though. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau a stove. And they shall kindle them, and they shall kindle in them, and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. And basically, the point is in verse 18. This is going to be the judgment of Esau Edom. Because after he serves captivity for a thousand years, he's going to be exterminated. He's going to be burned. There's going to be none left of the house of Esau Edom. There's going to be none left. So after they build, our, they build up the kingdom of heaven, they're going to be exterminated. They won't be able to enjoy the kingdom. Verse 19. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain, the Philistines, they shall possess the fields of Ephraim, and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zarephath, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Seraphad shall possess the cities of the south, and saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. And yes, once the Lord returns, even though he is already in his glory in the heavens, he is coming back to the earth to establish his kingdom, to receive his praise in the earth to possess the kingdom on the earth and once the Lord returns and delivers his elect he's going to set up judges and the judges are going to judge the mount of Esau Edom and this is going to be their judgment after they serve captivity for a thousand years so that's pretty much it Lord willing this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Kakadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. To the next time, Shalom.